We're off on our first jolly. We're off to Skimpton. Um, we believe there's a car park where it's five pound overnight, and there's camper van spots in it as well. So let's hope there's a space for us when we get there. Yeah. Just chewing into all the uh, noises and rattles that we'll have to address as we go, but I'm sure that we'll get to them shortly. It's over this bridge here. Oh, they're down there, old campers. Look. some green space as you meant to park it but they're all full so we're, we're not bothered about them we're just gonna wing it on a regular ticket and see what happens and that's us there just to the left and we've got some fish and chips and we're looking forward to eating them so i've been to busy lizzie's fish and chip shop and we've got them it's quite near to the car park in bridge street we've got them brought them back to the motorhome and these are the offerings. We've got a little bit of bread and butter to go with it. So I'm just looking at this setup. We're just in the corner of the car park. We've got lengthways beers. These are the green motorhome beers, which you're meant to pay five pounds fifty, I think it is, to stay overnight. You see there, there's a colonial friend, and uh, it just seems crazy how we've got like a lengthways beer. And then somebody could just park immediately behind you and in front of you and uh, block you in. Absolutely bonkers. Well, we're winging it on a, on a cheap ticket tonight. We're, we're there. And we're hoping that we don't get disturbed in any way whatsoever. As you can see, it's a very popular overnight destination in Skipton. There's a, a couple of Talbots in, which is good to see. And obviously hours but as it gets later it just seems to build up so we're going to go out uh, in a bit and check out the local sites so we're going for a little walk and check out on the nightlife and we're parked smack next to the canal we've got the curry house here and a selection of boats and some nice places to walk there are quite a few boat trips around here. They do vary in price quite a bit. You know, in the region of nine pounds. This this boat here is uh, available for four pounds, which is the most economically priced boat trip I have seen yet. We've even got boat tours where you can get afternoon teas, Sunday roast dinners, and Friday evening fish and chips. There's even more to do in Skipton than I realised, and the cost of a basic boat trip is £9.50 per adult. This is just a spit from where we parked, so it's, it's really good. We've got uh, Phoebe's there, and there seems to be no shortage of choice for uh, various ale hostilleries, and the boathouse bar, you just see, and uh, there's even a, a beer engine just to the left of me on Albert Street there with the Yorkshire Rose. So you don't really have to travel far to find a local watering hole. And we've even stumbled across Penny Lane. Are we in the right town? So we're just having a mosey round, exploring the town. Quite a few charity shops there. We've got Scope there and uh, Cancer Research. So if you, if you like riding through charity shops, that's available too. Uh, there is actually an Oxfam somewhere around here. Strangely enough, with a broken window. I'm hoping it hasn't been hit by a professional team. We've got the British Heart Foundation to add to the charity shop list. 
still can't remember where that Oxfam is. So you can get a map here just to prevent yourself from getting lost. Uh, why not just it, take a picture here and save yourself the pound? Another charity shop to add to the list, one that I've not heard of before since. So if you're a charity shop bargain hunter, you should be quite amused in Skipton and entertained. I'm not a million miles away from the Devonshire Vaults nearby, that's about next door, but three. So economics being what it is, we're gonna go for a jar in Weatherspoons. So what beers do we have here? What have we just brought back? Radfield Brewery Farmers Club and this one's Chino from some booze. Uh, is, that, is that a member of the clergy? Because it, it's got one hell of a collar. <laughs> I think they have done you actually, yeah. I think, uh, I think you got a really poor return on your investment with that. Um, uh, never mind, we'll uh, give it the taste test. So you're studying the menu there. Are you enjoying your pint of ruddles? Yeah. You're just looking for the other bargains. I mean, it was only one pound seventy-seven. I mean, I've I've gone for the for the Doom Bar. That's that's good value. A cheap date. You are enough. Is that the farmers? That's chin up. Chin up, yeah, that's got a really good tang to it, and, and that one's um, more mild, so I can drink either. What do you think, to Oh, it's very kind of you giving me the beer, which you know I would go for. That's much appreciated. That's one order of nachos for table 28, then. Yeah, just a little scuba snack. Yeah, nice. Look forward to that arriving. And that's um, a bit less than what you thought, portion-wise. A bit nothing. It's a bit... It's a bit... It's a bit of an anti-climax. Yeah, definitely. Don't worry, I'll give you Andy eating what little there is. Well, that went down well. There's a couple of dead soldiers there. The nachos were a little underwhelming, but we did a good job of demolishing them between us. So it's time to say goodbye to the Devonshire Arms and head back. You can hear live music coming from next door, which is quite good. into the Devonshire vaults and then the club here soft coffee and cycles. That's dog food in it? It is dog food yeah. Um, I hope it's delicious in there the, <laughs> the coffee house and bakery. This is the Oxfam that may be a victim of crime. I'm unsure as to the backstory but one theory is Somebody may have wanted to break in and steal their excellent merchandise. Here we are, returning back to the mobile site. Good morning, and we've woke up to the sound of church bells. I'm not quite sure where the church is. Uh, we're just having a look around the car park and a couple of coveted green bears. They're, uh, just over there in that area they have now appeared so that's interesting to know I think your best chance of uh, getting one of them is early morning but I'm gonna stay put because we've we've got away with a, a single ticket here and we're not parked in one and it hasn't been an issue 
So I'm just about to restoke the meter. So I'll just wait nine hours on the meter. I'm ready. So, when was England first raided by the Romans? 35 BC, 55 BC, or 85 BC? I'm going to go for 85. Uh -uh. It's 55 BC. Bit of an easier question this time. In yeah. which London Museum might you see Kylie, Justin Timberlake, or Wayne Rooney? Like waxworks kind of museum, I'm thinking Madame Tussauds. Correct. And I'll come back with another question for you later. So just next to where we parked, we've uh, obviously got the river here with a little height marker. And a load of vintage buses have appeared. This is the 17th Yorkshire Dales running here where you can get a ride on a vintage bus. So I'll just take a moment to tour around and see what vintage buses are here. You notice that there is actually a, a conductor on each bus, so it's quite old school. On the buses, eh? Oh, it looks to be like a London style bus. I'm, I'm no expert, but you know, Katrina's a big fan of buses. Isn't that right, Katrina? Yeah. Yeah, you love it, don't you? Yeah. Yeah, you can put everybody right. And there's some bus, really old bus here. Bradford. Yeah, there's plenty of clouds. Sus. Plenty of enthusiasts gather. People nearly as enthusiastic as Katrina. That is the oldest bus I've ever seen. It's lovely. They don't make buses like they used to, eh? That looks really good, that. Made by a craftsman. This vintage bus is, bus is Keyredge, that's the same vintage as our home. Our Talbot Express. And there's another one. It looks like it, yeah. It's a fair guess. I don't suppose we're ever really going to know. That one definitely Merseyside. And this one looks really retro in style. It's only got like a, a half cab. I'll be. And if ever your vintage bus gets in trouble, why not have a, a vintage recovery vehicle to provide the assistance? There's a couple of specimens here. These are tucked away behind a few buses in the display, out of sight. It's good to know that everything kind of props each other up. Little Woods. Anybody done the pools recently? Yeah, they're definitely from all over. Some of these buses, which uh, are now vintage, I can remember riding on them not really thinking a lot about it definitely that one in front of the camera 
Yeah, this coach here, that uh, reminds me of the one used in Porridge the Movie, where the, I don't know if any of you have seen it, but they had a celebrity football team come to play at the prison, and uh, well, I don't really want to spoil it, but it's just drawing that memory to me. I am personally wondering if they have came from St Albans, that's quite a distance away from Skipton, or is it just the livery? I mean, we've got Leyland Fishwick's garage, so is that Leyland in Lancashire? Or is it Leyland bus? More questions than answers. There's also a, a rally chopper. I haven't seen one of them for a while. That uh, looks a Bobby Dazzler. I hope it's securely locked. They're worth a few quid now. And there is a Morris Marina, which has entered the mix. It's a, I don't know if it's a GT model or GT badged. It does look like it's a GT model, actually. Um, the paint finish on that looks superb. Somebody's obviously spent a lot of time and care nurturing this. And I particularly like the vinyl roof. That looks exceptionally black. See one of the vintage buses making its way through the town as we're having a, a mosey round. I can't but notice it on the back, it is London Transport and that one's going to Gilders Green Street, Piccadilly Circus and Baker Street and Finchley Road. I don't quite think so, somehow. These uh, vintage buses are going in and out the bus station and Coach Street car park. There's one there just loading up. Well, we've heard if you want to ride on one that's what we've got to do but I don't think we're going to bother. Maybe a cruise. One thing we noticed is wherever you go in Skipton you're never that far away from the canal because the canal actually runs through it and there is an arm which we intend to walk up in a minute. It's Approximately 10 to 1 on a Sunday afternoon and the town centre is absolutely bustling as another vintage bus rolls by. And we're going to have a mosey around the Craven Court shopping centre. It's a bit of a labyrinth here. What have you seen in that window? Oh, back. Oh. Not short of them. Is that basil brush though? Not quite. Uh, similar. Since you the spider. Yeah, could be a knockoff. Well, there's no shortage of things to smell here. We have a free smelling test in this lovely little shop. I see you're taking an interest. <laughs> Sometimes I think it's a little wrong stimulating your taste buds with soap. That was Emma's apothecary and her favourite thing. It was a bit like entering in through the small part of the funnel. You seem to expand outwards. The deeper you go in. You'll see another fabled charity shop there. You actually can see research. There's an upper floor too, but the staircase is currently closed for refurbishment. So I've skipped in town hall and a couple of phone boxes have been repurposed as museums. One's a museum and the other one is a gallery. You can't actually go in them, but they are interesting to look through. So we're here at the main entrance to Skipton Castle. I've never noticed this before, but it does say Desob and Mays above the top of it. Also, the church is smack bang next to it, which is handy if you want to take a peruse at either of them. So, I've just been in the church and then behind us, and uh, really good. Um, they had a lot of stained glass, and um, did actually see for the first time ever 
um, an anchorite cell, so that's basically where somebody who dedicates their life to God and religious study, they have a ceremony a bit like a funeral and they actually get bricked into the church and live the rest of their days out in that very cell, so definitely worth seeing. It's a lovely building. So just trying to pork an apple pie from the celebrated pork pie establishment. Looks good to me. It's actually the little pork and apple one. Let's sample it. Any good? The meat, yeah. Mm. Yeah. It's Great. Nice. <laughs> well, leave that for me, won't you? I will. Well, we're just going to go for a little walk up to Skipton Castle Woods. Go see what's there. You can see right to the back of the castle here on this very path. As I'm walking along. Yeah, it's quite a good path this. It's very scenic. It just meanders. And we're getting nearer and nearer with every step. And here we are, we're at the very beginning. Skipton Woods. We'll have a look at the map and we think we can do a circular route. This is just the first curiosity we've stumbled across. We've just hit a fork in the road. We either take that route, which looks a lot flatter and easier, or uh, the hilly route. Mm. Guess which route the train is taking? I think that could be the best thing. Well, at least we're getting rewarded with a view halfway up. I think we could be coming back that way. Took the left fork at the bridge, then the right fork when we climbed, and we're hoping to go full circle round this wooded area. What is that? Remnants of an old shelter. Reminds me of the Wicker Man and uh, Blair Witch Project. All of it. Blair Witch inspired this. Everything's woven out of twigs. Keep seeing these things along the way. Getting nervous, Katrina. Yeah. No, nobody wants to fall. It's a bit steep. At least I put a handrail. Yeah, so we just came down there and uh, we got here and we, we nearly missed this side. We're going to cross the footbridge to see more. As with all school trips, sensible shoes are required. Well, it's a little bit different to what we thought. We've seen this sign way out in Castle, so I think we'll ascend these steps. It should be a case of confusing multi-level pathways. We picked one what said way out and Castle and Town, so hopefully we're on the right track. We've got equally more confusing, we know, uh, signs. So we just chose to keep with a higher ground because uh, in my experience, castles are normally built on hills. We'll see if this works out. So we just kind of got us bearings at this point, and we, we started here, just by the church, and we've done this, and uh, this is the point where we took his first fork. So we, and then we turned right, and we've done the full, the full long route, and we're now 
here. So we're getting very close, there should be a car park up here on his right. So we've actually done it right, we just didn't realise at the time. And we're now at the end, I suppose the simple rule of thumb is just keep the, uh, the stream on your right and take the high ground or the left, it just depends which way you go around. Thank you. Now we've gone pretty much full circle. We're back at the castle, that's just on our right. And I think what we'll do is make his way to the arm of the canal and uh, walk back that way. You're going under? <laughs> that does not take you onto the path. Well, it's easy when you know how. All we did was just double back and we're on it. See a few boats on the way back. White shoes might not have been the, the best choice. Well, I didn't choose to go down a running sludgy path. You did. <laughs> I did read that. Any boats going up the spring branch canal um, have to be 35 foot. Any longer than that, and they can't turn round. That might explain why this tourist boat is probably in the region of 35 foot. It must be around 30 minutes, I did use. just in the process of turning. That would explain it. It's all these longer uh, vessels, of which there are many, going to have to go down backwards. Looks like Sam's finished his trip. Clue seems to be at the uh, sound bar. They've lost the window too. Let's go to the other side. Well, um, I think we get the answer. Open as normal. New windows being made to replace the ones damaged in the tsunami. 5th of April 2023. It is a blonde beer, yeah. And I've gone for the, well, Destiny picked the black sheep. It's quite busy here, isn't it? We've just been in there, sound bar, and it's absolutely boiling hot in there with the live music. So we've come out because we feel we're going to burn up.
understand as my missus, she's got a revolting hangover, but she's not stopped mentioning it, so leave her alive. Nightlife for us. Uh, hopefully, we're going to be returning back to the motorhome. And last night, when we returned, there was actually an overwhelming smell of gas, which was a little perturbing. I had to disconnect the gas cylinder, and then uh, next day we put it on. Same thing happened. Um, I'm hoping that this smell is from the gas locker as in a leaking valve on a cylinder so change the bottle over but I'm not quite sure so here we are and we'll see if it smells of gas as we open the door can you smell any gas? not at all good no gas reassuring to know well it's now a fond farewell for Skipton um, I hope you've enjoyed the video and why not subscribe for more of our travels as we intend to go a little further afield in our newly purchased motorhome.